Hello everyone, my name is Emily and today we're going to be doing a review of a gouache that I bought off of the app Wish. Now I've dicked around on Wish before, getting as much free stuff as I can, and I've also seen other YouTubers do art supply hauls off of Wish. So I thought it might be a neat idea to buy one thing, one art supply off of Wish every now and again, and do a review strictly on that one item. So that item today is Marie's gouache color. A lot of the writing on the box is in Chinese, so I had to use the Google Translate camera function in order to translate and get a little bit more information from the almighty box. This gouache is light fast and does use real pigments and those are pretty much the only two pieces of information I was really looking for. I purchased the largest set available which was a set of 24 five milliliter tubes. It retailed at $8, but with the promotion I used, I only ended up paying $7.40 USD. They also come in a set of 18 and 12, and those are even cheaper. So of course, the price point, the fact that they're light fast and they use real pigment, it kind of seemed all just too good to be true. Especially when you compare them to other more popular kinds of gouache brands. Like Holbein, if you get a set of 12, five milliliter tubes on Amazon, they retail at $25.93 USD. And that makes a lot of sense because Holbein is a very reputable brand. They make very high quality art products. And then there's Reeves, who I am not a huge fan of. Historically, they've put out better products, but in the last decade, I feel they've taken a real dive in quality. So I would consider Reeves very much a beginner student quality type of paint. But even Reeves, a 24 pack of 10 milliliter tubes retails at 1722 USD on Amazon. So I was considerably skeptical when I buy a 24 pack of 5 ml tubes just for $7.40 and some change in shipping. Let's go ahead and start out with the pros. Right off the bat, I noticed the colors were very bright and vivid and not muddy or dim. Windsor & Newton is another brand of gouache I use a fair amount and I feel that their colors can run a little dim. Another thing that I was kind of expecting from inexpensive paints was for it to separate, for the binder, the clear part, of the paint to separate from the pigment and the filler. That's something that is fairly common with student grade gouache. You kind of have to mash up the paint within the tube before you squeeze it out. Um, you need to mix it back up again, otherwise there will be inconsistencies in your paints. And that's something you can see here with my Reeves gouache. Not a single color did that, so I was very impressed with that. Another thing that I was really impressed with is the colors dried Matt, not chalky. And there is a big difference, and I hate to pick on Windsor & Newton, but the kind of referring back to the dimness of some of their gouache, they can also come off a bit chalky. And the way I differentiate between chalky and matte, matte is smooth and, uh, you know, really lays flat up against the page, almost like uh, the page doesn't have any texture. And chalky uh, looks like you can kind of peel the paint off the page. It looks like it's not meant to be there. There is a difference. And uh, if you've ever used, say, again, praising Holbein, Holbein gouache against Windsor Newton gouache, you can definitely see the difference there. And I feel like Marie's gouache did a great job laying well with the paper. I didn't feel like I needed a drink of water after looking at it. And lastly, something I was very, very, very not expecting, uh, the colors mixed really well. A lot of the time with more inexpensive paints, they don't mix well. Uh, you mix more than two colors, they immediately become muddy. Um, but man, was I, especially for this little painting I'm doing here, I was mixing colors left and right, trying to get the right shade of this deep aubergine for the robes and the mushrooms and then kind of the very deep plums for the, the shading and the hair. Um, you know, I was throwing a bunch of different colors at each other uh, trying to get this shade and not once did the colors want to muddy. Uh, maybe just a tiny bit on the skin tones a little bit that they kind of tended to turn uh, a, a tiny bit orange, uh, but they ended up drying beautifully um, and drying down cool. So I, you know, gouache can be a little bit unpredictable no matter what when it comes to how it will be drying, especially when you're mixing colors. So I 
you know, was very impressed. Now that I'm done having like a freaking high school level makeout sesh with the pros, let's get into the cons, because there are a handful. They're mostly small, but there are a good handful. The two biggest cons are these colors are thin and streaky. If you want total, complete opaqueness, you need a lot of the pigment from the tube. Uh, otherwise, they act a little bit like watercolors. Uh, clearly my finished product doesn't look like it was painted with watercolors, but while I was working with them, or if I just put down one layer, you definitely could see the paper coming through the gouache. Of course, if that is happening with a paint that's supposed to be a gouache, you are going to see brush strokes and not the kind that are painterly and attractive, but like brush strokes pulling the paint away. With time, I was able to adjust my water to pigment ratio so that that wasn't happening as much. Um, but the standard amount of water I would use for anything like Holbein or Windsor & Newton or M. Grand, just not working with these gouache paints. So keep that in mind. It's something you need to get used to. Um, the other thing that kind of frustrated me, uh, but not too much, but that's only because I have other gouaches, there was no pure white. The white they gave me was a cream white, which was a nice touch, but I also really, really would have preferred if they included a very stark white in the set to mix with colors, because a cream white isn't always going to cut it. It's not always going to do what you need it to do when you are mixing it with other colors. Now again, this was not a problem for me because I have other gouache sets so I could grab a white from that. But if you're a beginner and this is your first gouache set, you're going to need to go out and get a single tube of pure white gouache. You just need a pure white gouache in your set. The other cons are a little more of a personal preference and kind of something that happens with a lot of gouaches. Um, one, it needs another violet. The violet they gave me is a very pink violet and I just, I, I want like a dioxazine violet kind of violet in there. Like I really, really like the, the, the violet they included, but it's just a little too pinky for my taste, so I would have enjoyed another violet. On the flip side of that, I feel like there were too many greens and I feel like I've made this complaint before somewhere, Gonzai Tolumbi, I just feel like you could remove one or two greens and give me two better colors. Another little nitpicky thing that I'm sure will bother other people is the color that is on the top tab of the tube, top tab of the tube, would not match the color that actually comes out of the tube. So that was pretty annoying. And when I say doesn't match, I mean really didn't match. There were a few times that I had to refer to the color chart because I just had zero idea what was gonna come out of the tube. And this one is definitely a con, but I've had problems with my Holbein gouache and my Windsor Newton and my Amgram. Uh, pretty much anything in a metal tube will do this. It will overflow or have a large level of out squirt. And of course, these gouache paints were being shipped from China, so they were up in the air, they were down at sea level, they were being moved around willy-nilly, so I'm sure that has a lot to do with it. But there were two colors in particular, and that was the deep red and the black that just would not stop squirting. Don't demonetize me. My Holbein gouaches gouaches in particular when I received them also had an out squirt problem and it's very stressful when you have such a small tube because you don't want to waste the colors and yeah I get gouache can be reactivated but nothing paints like fresh gouache out of the tube so I don't want to have to put it aside it's not going to work the same so you know it's it's stressful it's a whole added level of stress but again, that happens pretty much with anything in a metal tube. It will find a way to squirt, please don't demonetize me. Overall, I really enjoyed playing with this gouache. I think it's great for beginners as long as you go out and get a large tube of white gouache. I feel like the colors and the texture and the way the paints come out is much more comparable to Holbein than it is to Reeves, but it is still a very long ways away from being, you know, Holbein level of good. And I give Marie's gouache specifically ordered from the Wish app three clapping babies 
these out of five. I would recommend this brand of gouache to beginners just starting to dip their toes into the world of water-based paints. And I guess I would also recommend this brand of gouache to people who are a little bit more serious, um, maybe something for your sketchbook or something to travel with. But overall, I think this brand of gouache is pretty great and I'm glad I got the deal on it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and the painting I did was of a kind of a Susie from Little Witch Academia kind of inspired character. Obviously it doesn't look exactly like Susie because you can see both of her eyes. But uh, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. It will be for sale in my Etsy store for $20. All my originals right now are $20 for the month of October in my Etsy store. Or, but again, only for the month of October only. Not only that, but I have some other price adjustments on some other things in my shop. So if you're interested in purchasing something I've made, purchasing a print, purchasing some jewelry, go ahead and go to etsy.com slash shop slash Emily Artful Originals. Thank you guys so much for watching and don't forget to stay out of trouble. See you guys later.